Hi everybody, this is Tim on part two of the series that I'm doing called The Message Without Scripture. This is the last part. I'm going to suggest if you didn't get an opportunity to watch part one that you watch that. We're going to build on that a little bit here. But we're always going to do this the same. We're going to use Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. We're also going to use 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall ever a word be established. So we're going to take a look real quick at a, uh, and, and by the way, this is the message without scripture. What prompted this is I asked people to send me videos of message ministers, uh, and they basically sent a lot of videos. Wow, I got a ton of videos. We're, this is going to be very video intense again today. We're going to watch uh, Benjamin Seabolt. The, uh, the video clip, I'm calling it, What is the Secret of the Message? And we'll take a look at that, uh, and then we'll come back and address that real quick. As always, links to the videos are going to be in the description up here. Also, you're going to have the study notes for the second part are available up here. Any links to anything, like th there's a photo down below and some links to a website, they'll all be available for you in the description. All right, But let's take a look at Jason Seabolt. And let's take a look at his video. Here he goes, Jason Seabolt. I'm calling it, What is the Secret of the Message? Here we are. Brother Branham said, the secret of the message was to be about the Father's business, and the Father's business was to fulfill the Word of God. And then he gives us our instructions of what we must do to be about the Father's business, and he says our instructions are to vindicate Malachi 4, to vindicate Luke 17, 30, to vindicate Hebrews 13, 8, St. John 14, 12, all of his word, Revelation 10, 7, the opening, the seals, and the mysteries of God. I'm going to make it real plain for you, saints. We know there's an attack on this message. We know there's an attack on the prophet. There's an attack on the cloud. There's an attack on this vision. There's an attack on that vision. There's an attack on this situation. We are not to try to re-fulfill those things. We are to vindicate and to clear and remove all suspicion or false blame and to show and to prove that which has been said to be right reasonable and justified. And here's the thing. We're to do that without ever uttering a word. Because if you utter a word, they can utter more words. If you argue, they can argue back. If you get facts and figures and clippings and whatever else, they can get more. What they can't argue with is the vindication of a lived life. Because deep down in their heart, they will know, I can argue all that I want to. But you know what? They'll never say this. They're incapable of saying this. Because if they say this, they declare that you and the Father are one. And if they say that, then they automatically declare what their Father is. But what they will never tell you is, you know what? That person's got something I don't have. And it lines up with what that man said that they call as a prophet. And when you vindicate that, you remove all suspicion and blame from that ministry that God sent us. All right, welcome back after watching Jason Seabolt. Here's my question to, to or Benjamin Seabolt, excuse me. Here's my question to Benjamin Seabolt. What happens if what William Branham says doesn't align with the Word of God? You know, he said, we have something that you don't have. Let me, let me just clarify this for Benjamin, all right? What you've got is something else other than the Scriptures. It's at best extra-scriptural. It is at worst anti-scriptural, and I don't want it. Because I'm very clear in Revelations, the last chapter, where we hear John the Revelator say, if you add a word to the book, there are dire consequences. Just, I, I, 
what you got in terms of we had it we found out that it was extra scriptural at best anti-scriptural at worst and we left it we don't want it benjamin it's false teaching it is not the word of god it's not scriptural just want to make that clear let's talk about how message ministers deal with the with the subject of salvation here's J benjamin seabolt again this is july the 25th now in 2021 Calling this clip rejecting the message is to reject salvation. And then we'll see Benjamin Seabolt on the 27th of December 2020. Any conversion without the message is Antichrist. So here we go, two Benjamin Seabolt uh, videos back to back. Here we are. Jesus cared enough for the message of today to bring these same things to pass as he said till he died and rose again to send them by the Holy Spirit. Well, I thought he just died on Calvary for my sins. He did. Well, I accept Calvary. I accept God. I'm a Christian. The prophet of God said Jesus died on Calvary for this message. So if you try to tell me that you can set this message aside, but yet still accept Calvary, it doesn't line up. He says he, he cared so much for this message, to bring this message, that he died and rose again to send them by the Holy Spirit. You can't accept one without accepting the other, saints. It is impossible. His ministry today that he's still alive. He cared enough. Won't we care? That's the thing. Won't we care? He died for this ministry. So if you reject this ministry, what have you rejected? You've rejected his death. And there is no way that he can feed you and clothe you and prepare a place for you. Peter took the scripture and gave the proper interpretation to it. And they were converted. Don't think we're going to convert somebody any other way. It's not going to happen. And if we're doing it some other way, it's not my father's business. Brother Branham says, if we discern the two spirits within the framework of the Christian church, if one of those spirits is God's, what's the other spirit? There is only two spirits. Don't sugarcoat it. Any other attempted method of conversion without the proper explanation and revelation of the scriptures for our day is anti-Christ. It is of, the fa of their father, the devil. Any other method, any other way, it is of the father, the devil. Wow. Now that, those are powerful statements. So what did William Branham say about salvation and his message specifically? We saw in part one where William Branham talked about two stratifications of Christianity. One of them was the bride that will be taken into the rapture. The other was the church nominal. We also saw how Paul didn't talk about two stratifications of church and bride. He talked about everybody who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation, they will be taken up into heaven. So we know that the stratification of Christianity is not scriptural according to Paul and didn't Branham teach what Paul taught? Apparently not. Let's take a look at what William Branham says about that. This is 1953. This is June the 11th. Show us the Father and it'll satisfy us. This is Cornersville, Indiana. She said, now Reverend Branham, if I want somebody to talk to me about like that, I'll get somebody that's got some sense, not you. I said, very well, I've done all I can. Remember, sister, you, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you'll never be saved. 
William Branham is telling us here that his message is all about the Holy Spirit. By inference, William Branham is saying that he is, in fact, the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe my message, you blasphemed the Holy Spirit, and you'll never be saved. Then we've got William Branham here, 1961, April the 11th, but it wasn't so from the beginning, Bloomington, Illinois. Now here he is, this is William Branham speaking. Remember, let me tell you, thus saith the Spirit of God, that's on me. This is the last sign to the Gentile church before the rapture. Thus saith the word of God, thus saith the Holy Spirit that speaks, that knows the secret of the heart. Thus saith the Lord, you're receiving your last call. Call me fanatic if you wish to, and blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But didn't we hear in part one of this series that William Branham only taught what Paul taught? I mean, uh, uh, he's basically saying, don't, but, uh, and, and remember, this builds on what we talked about in much earlier videos several times. Uh, the, the, the spirit of Pentecost, it can't work for today. You got to believe in the spirit or the message for your day. Here he's saying, if you don't believe in the message for your day, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. No wonder we get emails and messages and comments from people that basically say, you guys are going to hell because you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. William Branham just told us that. We know it's extra scriptural. We know it's at, at worst anti-scriptural. Frankly, we know better. We're pretty, we're pretty secure. What does the Bible say about salvation? Let's take a look at what that looks like. Here's Jesus Christ himself. John 3, 16 and 17. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Let me go back and say that again. Everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. There's only one salvation. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Here's, here's Jesus again telling us in John 6, 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be raised up on the last day. I will raise him up on the last day. What did Paul tell us? Paul told us the dead in Christ will rise first to go up and meet God in the air. The dead in Christ will rise first. Here we have Jesus telling us the same thing. And I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus, we have John 14, 6, Jesus here. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Who is William Branham? If Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through him, why did William Branham say that you needed to accept the message for your hour? You needed to be bride separate from the nominal church right? Why do message ministers say, without this message, you don't have any salvation? Didn't we hear Benjamin Seabolt said rejecting the message is to reject salvation? Didn't we also hear him say any conversion without the message is antichrist? Wow, unbelievable. Here we've got Peter. Peter tells us in Acts 2, 3, 37 and 38, this is a common salvation. When they heard this, they came under deep conviction and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what, what must we do? Repent, Peter said to them, and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you are going to be taken up, as Paul calls it, in the rapture. You notice here that it doesn't say you'll receive the Holy Ghost and then if you're alive in the time of the next message, you have to believe in the message for your hour. That's not what Peter says. Here we have Acts chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. Peter again says, now he's talking because he had been put in prison. 
He's talking about, he, they're defending themselves in terms of what they actually did. Here he is, Acts 4, 9 through 12. If we're being examined today about a good deed done to a disabled man, by what means he was healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing here before you healthy. This Jesus is the stone rejected by you builders, which has become the cornerstone. He's talking to the Jews now who rejected the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's a great reason why Jesus went to his disciples and said, Go unto all the world, the Gentile world, and make disciples of them all. This is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name uh, under heaven given to people, and we must be saved by it. Uh, that pesky Apostle Paul. Here we have the Apostle Paul. Man, I'll tell you, didn't William Branham teach what Paul taught? Well, doesn't look like it. Let's see what the Apostle Paul taught. Here's Acts 16, chapter 30 and 31. We know this story. This is when Paul was in jail. The earthquake happened. The jail broke open. They stayed where they were. The jailer was going to kill himself, etc., etc., etc. Here we have Acts chapter 16 verses 30 and 31 then he escorted them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved so they said believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household Romans chapter 10 verse 9 here we go again with the Apostle Paul if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And didn't Paul tell us in our in the letter to the Thessalonians that the saved, that the first the dead in Christ and then those who were saved will be caught up in the air? He didn't talk about, uh, he didn't talk about, those guys will be saved all right, but they're not going up into the rapture. Only those who believe the message of their hour are going in the rapture. See, that's not what Paul said. He said the dead in Christ will rise, they'll go first, and then those who are saved will go up and they will meet the Lord in the air. Here he is again in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works so that no one can boast. In other words, if you do things like we've got to wear certain clothes because those are the only thing that are acceptable, if we do, because we got to do works, right? we got to do that. We have to obey certain of the Mosaic law, but not other Mosaic law. Don't cut your hair. You know, that where, hey, if you're led to do those things and to not cut your hair and to to wear clothing like that, that's entirely up to you. But it does not make you more holy. If the Holy Spirit leads you to do that, great. But it doesn't make you more holy than someone who chooses to cut their hair or someone who, in fact, wears clothes that, that you may not wear. Nor are the people that cut their hair or wear clothes that you may not wear, nor are they more holy either. Okay? Because it says right here, this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. What is boasting about? I'm better than the other person over here. I'm a different status than the other person over here. What do we hear from message churches and message ministers all the time? <clears throat> And then we have Titus telling us the same thing. This is Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. But when the goodness of God and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He poured out his spirit on, a, a, on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior so that having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Jesus Christ, 
not the message for your hour, not the spirit that's not adequate for today, which was on Pentecost, or excuse me, the, not, not in the spirit that's, that for this day, as opposed to the spirit that was for the day of Pentecost. If the spirit of the day on the day of Pentecost is sufficient to get you to the rapture, then what's the spirit of the message? Here we have confirmation from Peter, from Paul, from Jesus Christ himself, from Titus that tells us you're saved through Jesus Christ and that Holy Spirit. That's sufficient for being saved. That's sufficient to take you up into the rapture. So if that's true, and William Branham says that there's a different spirit for the message of your hour, which spirit is that? Just a, just a thought. Now, according to message ministers, now that we've left the message, what becomes of you? We're going to take a look at Andrew Glover. He's at Tim Pruitt's church. This is the 23rd of March, 2022. We're calling this clip, People That Leave the Message Because They had they Never Had a True Word Experience. Then we're going to take a look at Barry Coffey. This is the 30th of March, 2022. People who are against the message cannot live the light of God's word. So let's go ahead and take a look at Andrew Glover and Barry Coffey. Here we go. Hey Amen. I know that we're living in a day and time when there's such a falling away. The prophet of God would say it this way. We find today that there's such a falling away. It seems to be that people are not interested like they used to be. He said they're falling away from the fundamental facts of the Bible. He said they seem to be drifting. Isn't it a sad thing that we're living in a day and time when we're this close to the rapture? Hey Amen. And people are throwing in the towel and giving up. Isn't it a sad time when we're this close to, hey Amen, to the future home and the millennium of the church? Hey Amen. That people are growing weary and they're walking away and there's a question that always comes up when you hear that somebody has left is why did they leave? How could they do that? Amen. Can I give you the answer? It's because they never had a true word experience. Amen. They went out from us because they wasn't of us. The Bible said they cannot live in the light of the word. Now let me stop and say this because I, you know, I've, I've heard this verse misused quite a lot. Some people say, you know, if they leave a church, oh, they went out from us because they were not of us. You know, they could easily very well be believers, but something might have went wacky. Something, they might have been offended or something happened that was, uh, you know, um, out of season for them. And uh, I mean, there are people even who leave churches and, and move on to another area because they're led to do that. So we can't always say that because somebody's not in this church, oh, they went out from us because they're not, they're not of us. I will say that people that would walk away from the truth and build a website against it and begin to attack it and throw mud at it, discredit the prophet, discredit the people who follow it, those are people who cannot live in the light of God's word. All right. Now, what does the Bible say about those who live in the salvation of God? Let's take the example of judgment, for instance. William Branham and his ministers teach that the bride, the bride, is separate from the church. We just saw that in clips up above, and we talked about that in the scripture, although we didn't find that in the scripture. So what happens when those who are saved by Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, are raptured by Jesus Christ? Okay, here's John Chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus Christ again, I assure you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from life to death. Now here William Branham, uh, message believers and message ministers will say uh, that, that he here is talking about William Branham as well. Okay. <clears throat> Didn't we hear, as a matter of fact, uh, and we're going to hear this very quickly, but we we were didn't we hear that we're going to hear somebody say that that Jesus Christ died for this message. But here, that's not what this says. I assure you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me, me, not William Branham, has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from life to death. Will not come under judgment, but has passed from life to death. Here we have Acts chapter 10, verses 42 and 43. He, 
commanded us to preach to the people and to solemnly testify that he is the one, he, Jesus Christ, speaking of Jesus Christ, he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that through his name, everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins. Everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins. Okay? Not everyone who believes in William Branham. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ will receive forgiveness of sins. Okay? Here's Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through 26. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is Paul speaking. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God presented him as a, pro, as a propitiation through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness because in his restraint God passed over the sins previously committed. We are under the blood. So Christ, or God, in his restraint passes over the sins previously committed because we are under the blood. Nobody can take us out from underneath the blood who is here on earth, by the way. Because it's the blood of Jesus Christ. It is not the blood of a minister, Isaac Noriega. God presented him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. Not the one who has faith in the message for your hour or William Branham. No, no, no. Here's Paul again in Romans chapter 5. 8 through 11. But God proves his own love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than since we now have been declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from wrath. We will be saved through him from wrath. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have now received this reconciliation through him. Here's Peter in 1 Peter 1, 17 and 19. And if you address as Father the one who judges impartially based on each one's works, you are to conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your temporary residence. For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life inherited from the fathers, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. We are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Here's John the Evangelist, first John, first chapter, seventh verse. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. There is no nominal Christianity versus the bride. We have one salvation. We are under the blood of Jesus Christ. So what else do message ministers teach that's opposed to Scripture? I'm going to go through, here's Dwayne Lawson again, Ron Peterson's church. This is the 17th of March, 2022. He's going to talk about the carcass and the eagle will gather, and then we'll come right back. Here we go. Brother Branham was a, was a naturalist. He looked at nature all the time. He said, it's time. When you see the bees begin to swarm, they're fixing to move. When you see the salmon gather out in the Pacific Ocean, they're fixing to make a run. And when you see this bride gathering together under the revelation of this age, she's fixing to leave the earth. Where the carcass is, there the eagles shall be gathered together. This is a gathering of eagles in the last days. What is it? It's a spiritual age. Now here's what I'll tell you about message ministers. They often start too late or they end way too early. What does scripture say? Matthew 24, 24 through 28, for there shall, now he's talking about verse 28 here, for whosoever the carcass is, wheresoever the carcass is, there will eagles be gathered together. Let's take it from the beginning of the context. 
started way, way, way too late. Here's Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. This tells us, Jesus Christ here is telling us, signs and wonders don't vindicate prophets. Verse 25, Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if, the, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chamber, believe it not. Behold, he's William Branham, the messenger, don't believe that either. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Son of Man, by the way, is a term that Jesus Christ only used for himself in a deprecating way. Son of Man does not refer to anyone except Jesus Christ. So the Son of Man doctrine, we've talked about that in other videos. Okay, So here we're, Jesus is referring to himself. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever the, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. In other translation of the Bible, the word eagles is also vultures. It's the carrion, those who rip the meat. So eagles are somewhat dubious in that in the King James Version, but we'll leave it there. How about making up our minds about the message? Well, let's, talk, let's listen to Duane Lawson again at Ron Peterson's church. This is the 19th of March, 2022. We're calling this clip, Got to Make Up Your Minds. Are you with this message or not? Here's Duane Lawson. Train to war. Never notice this, train to war. That when God trained Joshua how to war, remember who trained him? Remember who trained Joshua how to war? He come to him and told him, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Remember he told him them things? And then the minute that Joshua came up to the walls of Jericho, he didn't know how to get through them. Well, God came down, didn't he? The Bible said a, a, a man stood there with a sword in his hand ready for the battle. And Joshua said, are you for me or are you against me? Hey Amen. you got to make up your mind. You with this message or you're not. Okay, so there's Lawson. Now, listen, obviously there's concern that people are not 100% in, into the message because they're getting more information. There's a concern that people are learning. There's a concern that people are beginning to understand that what's being taught to them isn't necessarily scriptural. And so, and so Lawson's telling us, you got to make a choice. You're either in or you're out, either one. It's an interesting concept. Here's, other, here's another minister's that's that's preaching about much the same thing in the message. This is Tom Ray. This is the 16th of March, 2022. Calling this, we would not have a clue of what to preach without Malachi 4. Here's Tom. We wouldn't even have a clue, as I said on Sunday, anything that I said tonight or any brother that's preached over this pulpit have a clue what to preach if it wasn't outside of Malachi 4. We quote it, we quote, we quote it, we quote it, we quote it, we quote it, we quote it. Hey, 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 Tom. Hey, Tom, I've got an idea. What about the Bible? You wouldn't have a, you wouldn't have a clue to preach? See, this goes back to the discussion I've had on several videos. What other than just being able to repeat message quotes, what qualifications of ministry do message ministers possess? If you can't teach anything, then Malachi 4. And, and he's talking about nobody that comes across their pulpit at, at Cloverdale Bible Way. It, it, boy, if it weren't for Malachi 4, they wouldn't know what to preach. The question is, then why are they standing on the pulpit? What happened to the Bible? Wow. Here we've got Barry Coffey. This is the 3rd of April, 2022. We're calling this, Did you ever find where Branham said, Thus saith the Lord, and God did not do it? Here we are. So in all of your learning, and of all of your years of experience in the message, do you ever find where Brother Branham's comments and statements became a reproach? Because he was saying something that God never did and God was not true? Did, have you ever found anything where Brother Bram said, God's going to do something, thus saith the Lord, and then God didn't do it? No. 
Because God ordained his ministry for this last day, right? Are you following me? God or well, yeah, Barry. Yeah. Yeah, we have. How about the brown bear vision? What about the South African campaign? What about healings that we've talked about in other YouTube videos? I'm gonna, I put some clips of some YouTube videos in the, in the uh, description down below and also in the study notes. See, here's how we know that somebody doesn't qualify as a prophet of God. Here's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22. And all of those things that I just described, brown bear vision, South Africa vision, the healings under thus saith the Lord, 1,616 times in 1,100 sermons, which did not come true. Here is Deuteronomy chapter 18, 20 through 22. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if, and if thou say in thine heart, here's the question, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Here's God's answer. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, thus saith the Lord 1,616 times, if the thing followeth not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Here is 1 Samuel 3, uh, 19 through 20, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. How did they know? Or who knew the nation of Israel? How did they know? None of his words fell to the ground. None of his words fell to the ground. They were all true. Finally, we're going to show some interesting information here. This is There's a new message. Everybody should be excited about this. There's a new message church in Texas. Now, the New Message Church in Texas is a Reverend Junior Brumbach. I'm going to show you the picture that's on his website. Do you see anything interesting about this picture? There are two pictures of William Branham with the, the, the light above his head at the Houston Coliseum, the ceiling light which hit his head, okay? Uh, they, the, the pillar of fire photo, whatever they call it. Here, this guy is standing behind the pulpit with both of, with, with the only thing behind him are those two pictures of William Branham. Let's see what, and I, and I left a link so that you can get this directly from his webpage. Don't believe me. Go look at his webpage. Here's what it says on his webpage. Quote, Reverend Junior Brumbach has a pleasure to announce to all the Branham across the word, world that our church, Mission Evangel Evangelical Branham Church of Texas, has finally opened its doors to the public. Let's go back and, and take a look at that name of the church again. Mission Evangelical Branham Church of Texas. Mission Evangelical Branham Church of Texas is legal rec legally recognized by the state of Texas as a legal entity, and it's also certified as a nonprofit organization. Our mission here to the United States, there's some misspellings. He's obviously not from the United States. English is obviously not his first language. <clears throat> is to preach about William Merriam Branham. For our contact information, church programs, and locations, you can find it on our website listed below. Please let us know by a text or email that you will be visiting us. William Merriam Branham is our Lord, the creator of this world. That's on the website. If you have any questions about or belief and about who William Merriam Branham Come join us. We are here to answer your questions. William Merriam Branham bless you richly. May William Merriam Branham bless you richly. And then he's got some, on the, on the webpage, are some links to videos and uh, also the mission uh, church's page. Uh, idolatry much? But why does he say that? Why does he believe that William Marion Branham was Lord and actually, why, why does he think that William Branham actually um, <clears throat> created the world? Because William Branham said it. Here he is in 1962, March the 18th, the spoken word is the original seed. There's three comings of Christ. This is William Branham speaking. There's three comings of Christ. He came once to redeem his bride. That's when people, that's when the Lee Vales and the Christ Branham group believed that William Marion Branham actually was 
Christ because they know that William Marion Branham came back to came to reveal the bride, to redeem the bride. Therefore, he must have been Christ because he just told us this. There's three comings of Christ. He came once to redeem his bride. He comes the next in the rapture to catch away his bride. He comes again in the millennium with his bride. That's why they believe that. We, but but the most shocking statement, William Branham. William Marion Branham is our Lord, the creator of this world. And the photo with the two, nothing about God here, nothing about the Lord, nothing about the creator of the world according to the book of Genesis. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Listen, I end with that. We love you guys. We're done with this two-parter. I just wanted to get this out to everybody. Sorry that it was so video intensive. Boy, I ask and you shall receive, right? I asked to have people send me videos where message ministers taught things which did not align with scripture. Wow, did I get message ministers clips. Thank you for that. Thank you for letting me address those things and for comparing those things with the Word of God. We love everybody. I sure hope you're having a great 2022. Please go out and watch the videos that are available on the Seven Seals. Rod's doing a fabulous job talking about where the seals actually came from. And again, if that's William Branham's value add is that he opened the Seven Seals, boy, there's an issue in there. God bless everybody. If you have any questions, the end card's going to tell you about how to get in contact with us. We love to hear from people. We just enjoy talking to you. Anything else we can do for you, let us know. God bless everybody, and have a great year. Bye-bye.